Hey everybody, it's Romania Black. We are on episode 19 of Seraph of the End. Um, so I had some comments that I meant to address in episode 18 and I forgot. <laughs> so, um, these are going to be from a couple episodes back, but I forgot to, ep I was so excited in episode 18 to dive into that episode and see what was going to happen that I just rushed into it and totally forgot the comments. And then when I got done with the discussion and clicked off on the camera, I looked down and was like, I didn't talk about any of those. So, uh, I have two comments, one from here for the plot and one from Maria G that I want to address uh, before we start episode 19. Uh, and here for the plot's comment is, relates fairly well because the title of this episode is Shinyan Gurren. My, my possible ship along with me can you, uh, Shinya and Gurren, the two people that I am most convinced are possibly traitors. Is it both of them? Is it one or the other? Is it neither of them? Maybe we'll find out this episode. I don't know. There was that moment that that tight shoulder squeeze in the last episode from Gurren that I'm like, oh, you're just setting stuff up show. But yeah. So here for the plot talked about how um, Coretto not trusting Shinya and talking about how because Shinya and Gurren are so close that Coretto is kind of using Shinya sort of as a hostage in this situation and making him go on the field because Gurren, because he cares so much about Shinya, he's, if he is the traitor, he's not going to put Shinya in danger by betraying the others and it's going to kind of keep him in check, right? Now the twist would be, I, I put in my notes here, the twist will be if Shinya knows that that's why Coretto's doing this and if Shinya's a double agent and is like, I it's fine. The twist would be if Shinya is afraid of getting Gurren hurt because Shinya is the traitor. So I feel in the last episode, they really focused on Shinya's expressions a lot. And I was like, mm, you seem suspicious, Shinya. But I'm sure there's more to it than just Shinya is a traitor, if that is the case. We just, as the audience, don't know it yet. But yeah, um, they also talked about there being light novels. And then in the Seraph of the Endless, Gurren talked to Shinya about... Um, about like the whole story about him being the main protagonist. And apparently there's some light novels where Gurren is like the main character and sort of the way here for the plot described it is a how I met your mother story to you about him and Shinya meeting. I'm like, that sounds great. I'm all for that. So I don't know. Um, I don't right now anticipate reacting to the light novels, but once I get into the manga after the anime is over, if people send me like the English translations, I may read them on my own time after the anime and then talk about them with the manga reactions themselves. That would be interesting or just save them for later, you know. Um, but I do I do like the premise of that. I like Shinya and Gurren as a couple and that makes me worried for them, especially when an episode is titled with their names. Uh, speaking of Shinya, Maria G commented that Shinya's voice actor is Makoto from Free and I'm like, oh, I went back and looked at episode 18 and I'm like, yeah, Shinya's voice, it is Makoto. But then also noticed that, noted that Narumi's voice actor is Reiner from Attack on Titan would not have picked that up at all. And now I want to like extra listen close and see if I hear Reiner, but I didn't pick up that at all. Now Shigure, um, Shigure, Maria noted, is the same voice actress as Mikasa from Attack on Titan. I can hear that, that kind of soft-spoken, calm voice. I can hear Mikasa and Shigure, and I can hear Makoto in Shinya. But as far as Narumi goes, like kudos to the voice actor. I never would have guessed it was Reiner or Sosuke from Free if we're going with Free characters. So yeah, huh? Because Sosuke, Sosuke and Reiner sound similar. Their characters sound similar. But Narumi so far, I don't really know, notice that. So I'm going to, have to pay attention for this episode. But oh, buddy. Okay. All right. I mm, mm, we're officially this is episode seven of season two technically. So I have my rule of eight, which will be the next episode. And if this is leading up into it, I'm, I don't know y'all. I'm really excited though. So let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in, shall we? And see what all happens. So we're going to start Seraph of the End, episode 19 here in three, two, one. And I'll see y'all on the other side. It. How could it? How could it just end there? Why? Ugh. That's so frustrating. <laughs> that is so, so frustrating that it just ended there. Oh, I, man, this series, 
I, the episode went by so quickly, and there was some recap involved at the beginning, but it went by super fast. And then it was just like, done. Done and over, and you. What a cliffhanger. How dare they. <sighs> I, I Something's going to save you, obviously. But, and I don't know if it's going to be Shinya or Gurren, either one, but... Shinya is still suspicious. He really is. There's a couple things that Shinya does that I'm like, mm, he's still suspicious. Gurren, at this point, I'm like, no, Gurren's kind of, Gurren follows with his heart much more than his head. And yeah, Gurren definitely, now, at this point, Gurren wants to do anything to win. And so I, I get the feeling that the whole thing with with you and the whole whatever the Seraph is, because we know him and Mika are Seraphs, we don't know if Yoichi and um, Kimizuki are, but we know that Gurren was on to like you being some kind of experiment and that being exacerbated at the end of, of the first core. And so I do think that Gurren is partially in the know about that. But in Gurren's mind, he's just using you as a means to stop the vampires, right? But I do think it's so complicated because there's that. But then I do think Gurren cares about them. But it's it's a weird dynamic, right? The, the Gurren of part one is quite different than this Gurren. So it's almost, they're almost like two different people. It's kind of crazy. And there's a part of me that wonders if a lot of the stuff from part one that Gurren was doing was to help Shinya. And he didn't realize in helping Shinya that he was aiding Farad and the others. Farad's definitely the traitor on the vampire side. Farad is definitely, the fact that none of the vampires like him and they all are suspicious of him. And Cru I don't think Cruel's the traitor. I think Cruel's withholding information about the Seraphs, but I don't think she's outwardly giving it to the humans. I don't think that's her goal at all. She seemed just as surprised about all this as everybody else. But Farad is clearly the one that is the ringleader of traitor traitor's actions in terms of, and then I like that we cut straight in the OP from Shinya over to Farad and Crowley. And Crowley likes Farad just because Farad's interesting. Um, nobody else likes Farad. <laughs> they all think he's shady and weird because he's shady and weird. Um, but ah, I still think Shinya is suspicious. And I think that for a number of reasons. So this fight, this shot of Crowley versus you in the OP is probably going to come to fruition in some form next episode. And we saw that, um, that whip-like thing go at Kimizuki which makes me think of the, the one girl, um, Horn, that she has the whip. So it makes me think that, that Kimizuki is going to fight Horn. I don't know. I really like the name Chess. Chess is a fun name. And so I, it doesn't seem to fit her character at all because her character does not seem analytical or calculating at all. She seems very bubbly. Maybe she actually is. It's funny because you'd think the names would be reversed, that you would have Chess being the one that's more blunt and literal, and that, that you'd have Horn be the one that's blunt and literal, and you'd have Chess be the more analytical one. It seems like their characters and their names are reversed, which we don't know how they actually are. Maybe at the maybe at the end of the game, maybe at the end of the day, Chess is the more strategy-based one, and Horn is the one that's more blunt. I don't know. It might be a nice subversion of that. But so we get this little moment here with Gurren and them trying to plan out what they're doing, and he's got the, like the little binocular or the ocular looking there and seeing the hostage situation. It seemed on the outset like they got most of the hostages out, which is good, and let them go to the airport. That seemed like it was the case, but I don't know. We don't know exactly if it worked or not. But they sit here trying to make up this plan of what's going to happen. And you, of course, is like, you so gung-ho about rescuing everybody and Narumi, which for the record, for the record, we didn't hear Shiguri talking this, but Narumi and Shinya, I can so hear Makoto and Reiner. M Shinya to the point where I was like, oh no, now that I know this, I'm just going to think of Makoto in this whole scene. No. But yeah, I, they think of all these options here of what could happen and what the odds are. They're like, we can, and as soon as they say, we'll snipe them and see how they react. I was like, that makes perfect sense. You're at an advantage because you have distance between you. So they have their three targets and they know all their names. So again, the vampires don't realize that the humans know who they are. And I don't think the vampires don't know who they are because Crowley doesn't know Gurren's name. He just says the commander, right? It's funny because Narumi a few episodes back was telling you how he needed to know the names of the enemy. And you was like, I don't need to know their names. I just need to know the names of the people I'm saving, right? And then you have the vampire side. who The vampires don't seem to know who any of these people are. They're like, we don't know your names. We just know that you are the enemy. It's an interesting contrast. It's very interesting. But yeah, the, the fact that humans have like first name bases on all the nobles. 
Sferid's given out a lot of information. It's quite interesting. Horn Scold is also an incredibly odd name for her because she looks like a literal humanized Chansey. <laughs> but yeah, so the enemy, if the enemy's stronger than us, we're giving up on the hostages. It seems like they are, but the way that they end up strategizing, they kind of find a middle ground in this conversation where they split up to rescue the hostages while still advancing on Crowley and them. And when Shinoa, Shinoa, whenever you's like, we're not giving up on them, we're going to fight. We can't do that. Shinoa has this like, give me strength moment. <laughs> like she just closed her eyes and she's like, did we learn nothing from Core One? <laughs> like just, because you, you kind of like backtracks a little bit in this moment because they'd established, they're like, no, if they're overpowered, you retreat. And you seems, it is a moment where it's like, you, did you not remember anything from the first part of this? But he also said he doesn't remember some stuff from that battle. So maybe he forgot about that. And so Gurren's like, our priority is to maintain our current head count. But it's kind of then saving and freeing the hostages. So it's one of those situations where he's like, because at first glance you may think, okay, well, if you want the more people to live, wouldn't you want to rescue the hostages? But that's a gamble on their own lives. So Gurren's saying, look, we've got this guaranteed group of us that have survived these hostages Either we're going to save, that's the gamble, or they're going to die and we will die too trying to rescue them, or they're going to die anyway. The vampires are going to torture and kill them for information. So, because they're all about not reproducing and making more vampires. So, I get what Gurren is putting down. He's like, we are at an advantage right now because we're all here. We're fine. If we go down there, yeah, we may save people. Or we may be in worse shape than we already are. So it's like, do we cut our losses and go? Or what? Or do we risk it, right? And Gurren seems like a strategic gambler. He's like, we won't fight if we're going to die. Like, we're not going to just throw our lives away. And that's when Naruri brings up, okay, wait. So there's another mission after this one. And Gurren's like, yeah. Yep. Our job is just to keep the vampires in Nagoya until the main squad from Shibuya comes and wipes everybody out. So like, Gurren's like, yeah, if we can wipe out some nobles while we're here, let's do this. But the Shibuya, the Shibuya unit coming in, that's what we're waiting on. Right now they're in Shinjuku. So interesting. It's just, they're all decoy missions. They're all pawns pushed to the front to weed out the nobles and then them all get rushed in the end. The noble extermination mission is just phase one. So yeah, I'm like, phase one of what? Because the nobles are pretty much like the main vampires, right? So I guess they're trying to get to the progenitors once they get past just the, the other nobles like Chess and Horn. They're just trying to get to the main nobles and the progenitors, perhaps. And so, yeah, and Gurren, Gurren's like, we finish each other's sandwiches. <laughs> like, we just finish each other's sentences. Isn't that great? Mm-hmm. If they attack, we'll run. If it works out, we could free the hostages. Okay. And if it really works out, we'll kill Crowley and the other two. Ha 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 ha. And he's like, it's not going to work out that well. So that's red flag number one. Red flag number one is Shinya being like, we're not, that's not going to work out. No, we're not going to kill Crowley and the other two. No. And that's when Gurren says, you're such a pessimist. And I'm like, and he says, I'm just telling it as it is, but let's do the best we can. I'm like, well, Shinya knows that it's not going to work because he's the traitor. <laughs> no, I don't know. But that is red flag number one in the moment where he's like, we're not going to defeat Crowley. And Gurren's like, are you being pessimistic? And it's funny because I never would have really considered Gurren an optimist. But he kind of, again, season two, core two Gurren is much different than core one. It's interesting. I don't know if he's just like showing more of his true self around everybody now that they've warmed up to him or what. But yeah, so Shinya brings Yoichi here. Again, I... I'm super curious why Shinya yet lets Yoichi take the shots. Because Yoichi is not the advanced sniper that Shinya is. Why didn't Shinya take the shot at him? He says, I'll target the fourth floor, you take the fifth floor. So I get that. I get that they each took floors. But the moment he said, but he saw, he saw Crowley through the fifth floor. And he's like, I have a visual on a vampire on the fifth floor and he's a noble. And so then, this is this is red flag number two. Red flag number two is that Shinya is like, oh. Like, Shinya, like, draws his weapon back. He's like, oh, you do see a noble on the fifth floor, huh? What are the odds? So my question is, did Shinya expect to see Crowley on the fourth floor? Was that expected? Like, what, 
what we doing, right? Was he expecting to see him on the fourth floor and then just got lucky that Yo Yo Yoichi saw him? And Yoichi says, give me the green light to shoot before he sees this. And Gurren's like, yeah, do it. And so, but I'm like, Shinya, you could have taken the shot too, right? You could have shot at the same time. And it just, it misses. It's too slow. He catches it. And he's like, well, there went all of our reports. I'm going to be curious if anybody stumbles upon the reports that fall into the ground from that window. I, I'm going to be curious. I also like, it's it, unintentionally hilarious that he has a hold of Yuichi's thing. He's like, weird. <laughs> I just, I actually like Crowley a lot. Chess and Horn are okay. They don't have a lot of characterization to them. But Crowley is like so chill and like just effortlessly chill. He's just like, eh. Like, I like Crowley a lot. I He's not arrogant. He just gives no AFs. Like, just none. No Fs given whatsoever. But yeah. So it's like, okay, do we give our, do we shoot again? Do we give our position away? What do we do? Ah. Uh, ordinarily, even a noble wouldn't be able to dodge that, which means that they're really strong. Like, uh-huh. Makes sense the nine elite squads were wiped out. So yeah, and then and then Yoichi says, you, we know him. And he's like, yeah, he's the guy we fought before we headed to Shinjuku. He's with his comrades. So yeah, he's like, we've met him before. And then it's just like Celine Dion plays and you like starts remembering everything. Now, you does you starts to remember the others getting their blood drank by Chess and Horn. That's an odd visual of of Horn drinking Kimizuki. She's got like her, her hand over his glasses pushing them up. He's like, give me that. Takes the monocular away. But yeah, so you doesn't quite remember when he went crazy and fought Crowley, like with the angel wing and everything, but he does remember them stumbling upon them right before they got to Shinjuku. And he does remember the blood sucking thing after the fact. So interesting. Interesting. And so Crowley's just like, hey, what's up? It's fine. He was super strong. Hmm. And so Shinya's like, well, we have no if and we have no chance of winning if we go head on. So he lays it out. And Shinya's like, well, we either shoot the hostages before they're tortured and run, which would be what they normally would do. Now here's the thing, you is like, you've got to be kidding. No. And Shinya's like, hold on there. So that makes me curious, like, if you finds out that like um oh Ihara she basically killed herself and made her troops kill themselves. Like, how would you react to that? Because he seems all against that, right? And she says, and Shinoa holds him back and says, what's the other option? He says, successfully split the enemies up, save the hostages, and retreat. And I love that Shinya says, I won't, I don't have to say which will have more survivors. Which is sad and crazy because... Shinya's saying, if we shoot the hostages and run, we'll have more survivors than if we go down there and try to help them. But I don't know. It seemed like it was working. So maybe. Seemed like it was okay. But again, Shinya does not want to engage in Crowley and them. He wants to for them to go. Right? That's interesting that Shinya like, doesn't want to engage Crowley. And then Yu's like, we're not leaving comrades behind, are we, Gurren? And that like just... You just because Shinya established in the last episode that Gurren has a soft spot for his comrades, and he's like you, he wants to save them, but unlike you, he's had all this experience, he's worked his way up into this leaderly position, so he is responsible not only for the hostages, but also for you and the others. So, what do you do? Do you gamble? And they're all looking at him for an answer. And Narumi says they should kill the hostages and retreat. He says, they're not attacking us back. They shouldn't care about us. So let's just get out and go while we still can. And you, he gets mad at Narumi. And Narumi's like, look, there's some of my friends too. But if, do you really think we're going to be able to save them? Or are we going to go down there and get killed along with them? He's like, and he, he kind of makes, you know, tells you that he's making a scene. He's like, you know, he's like, you're just getting all emotional about it. And that's when Shinoa bursts in and says, you know, is this... A decoy mission. Let's just be decoys then. And then yeah, Gurren kind of finishes the four. He's like, I know what you're thinking. We'll be decoys until the main unit gets here. We'll make them think we're the main unit until they actually arrive. And Shinya says, I don't mind doing that, but there's no way we'll win with them waiting around for us like that. Mm -hmm. And he's like, we'll just retreat if we can't win. 
So yeah, there, there's a lot of tension in this scene. Like the tension between Gurren and Shinya, it's interesting, right? And then we cut back to Crowley just waiting, like just biding their time. Hmm. With his two busty ladies. He's like, it's fine. We'll just wait patiently for them to come to us. Yeah, and then Horn is, of course, like, well, I don't understand why they would attack again if they didn't think they could win. And he says, humans are foolish in the medium and long term, but not so dull in the short term. I like that. So he's like, they don't plan ahead long enough for, like, long-term goals or, like, mid-goals, but, like, short-term stuff they're good at. Hmm. Interesting. And then I like the chest. Like, what do you mean? They've made preparations to beat the nobles. Mm-hmm. And you're sure they'll attack again because of it. Or they have another agenda. So yeah, Crowley's on to the fact that something's up. He's like, he's like, they're not good long-term planners. This is just a decoy. This is something short-term until until another army comes up. I think Crowley knows exactly what's gonna happen. But he wants to confirm it. So he's like, Sparrow wants a lot of information, so we need to gather intel. Of course, Farad wants information. So that's why they took the hostages to begin with, was just to find more information about the situation to tell Farad, because Crowley and Farad are BFFs. And I love these girls, Chess and Horn. They're like, I don't like Lord Farad because I don't understand him. And it's like, yeah. And they're like, for the first time, you and I agree. Uh-huh. Yeah, and he's like, but there's never a dull moment with him. So that that is the thing. I don't particularly care for Farad's character, but he's such a diva and he's so much fun to watch in this series that I am glad he's here. It's been a long time since we've had Farad back in the show. I'm kind of missing him a little bit. And so then Crowley's like, let's just capture the commander then. He's probably got the most intel. Let's just do that. Easy said and done. We're not going to keep the other ones. Just keep the, com the commander. So Gurren's the only one they want. And I'm just imagining, I'm imagining that Mika is going to show up in the midst of all this and be fighting Gurren somehow. <sighs> no. Because of the OP. So Gurren and Shinya are just going to face the noble and her, which is terrifying, right? And then they're going to send Narumi and you squad, Shinoa's squad, to go rescue all of the hostages. Mmm... And so then they're going to meet up with the airport and there's a carrier helicopter and a directive at the airport. Follow that. Yeah, so it's just all setting it up. Oh my God. They're like so about launching these attacks like five, ten minutes into this. Like, no, we're fine. We got this. Mm. And the only one that salutes is a uh, Inoue. Inoue salutes. Okay, so Shinya, again, by themselves waiting for the enemy, which I don't think anything's sketch about that moment because Mito and the other ones are there. And they're getting all their gear ready. Mm -hmm. And so Mito's like, are we really attacking first with Gosh Goshi's illusionary spell? So we can make it look like there's 200 men. And so, yeah. And then Goshi's like, well, I have to be within their range. We have to get close to the enemies in order for it to work. And he's like, then get close. And he's like, ah! And then Shinya's like, well, Goshi's a dead man. So, yeah, just that little banter, like Shinya being like, mm, is that going to work? Mm. Like, just Shinya constantly, and I know what Gurren means by pessimism, Shinya keeps trying to just point out all the flaws of this plan and how it's not going to work. Like, he's trying to keep them from doing it. My theory, because he knows what's up. Mm. He's like, come on, Major General Shinya. Yeah, come on. Come on, why would you be suspicious? Why would you be suspicious of this plan? Don't you think it's going to work out great? I know that you could argue he's being a realist, but it just reeks of suspicion to me. And I can't, I can't pin it down any other way. So yeah, so they all go to move individually to save the hostages. And then Narumi's like, and this is like the biggest red flag moment when he's like, don't die. And he's like, same goes for you guys. And he looks directly into the camera and says, there's no way we'll die. Really? Who do you think is the team leader? They're all going to die. <laughs> like I'm like, that just sealed their fates. Just sealed their fates. I'm like, you can't say something like that in an anime. You just can't. It just doesn't work that way. 
And so, and then they say, let's go save our comrades as they all turn with their backs to the camera walking away. You, you might as well have just had the sunlight shining on them in a, pit, a pristine sunset because these characters are going to die. No, I just, ah, I don't get good vibes. And then Shinoa being like, let's go the other way. We should go too. But yeah, okay. So then they get started, Gurren and them, right? Oh my god. You guys already, anytime, you can count on us. Mm -hmm. This whole episode was just, it was so much tension. And they basically have five minutes. So, at five, so here's the thing, at 1510, she's like, we're going to leave when our alarm goes off, no matter what. And she says, especially you, you. She's like, don't you be sticking around because we need to get out. You'll try to stick around and do something stupid. Let's not do that. So I, oh, mm -mm. nope. That, that whole, this whole thing is setting up when she's like, no matter what, we're, that's the mission rule. Even if, me, if it, even if it means leaving behind one of us. So that's setting up two things. One, she says, no buts. I don't want anyone killed because of my mistake. It's setting up three things that I think is going to happen. One, it's setting up that Mika is going to show up on the scene right as they're about to leave. And you is going to choose to stay behind with Mika. I think that's going to happen because we'll be, we're getting to the end of the series where episode eight of season two is next. There's 12 episodes in the second core. We're getting into the final act. I think that Mika's going to show up and you's going to stay behind with Mika somehow or another. So it's setting up that. It's setting up that... Shino and the others are going to leave you with Mika. I think they are because she's going to be like, I said we're going to leave, we're going to leave. And the others are going to be like, Shinoa, you said we were going, let's go. I think she's going to leave you with Mika. Now, the other question is, though, is she's like, I don't want anyone killed because of my mistake. I don't think anyone, I don't think any of our main squad here is going to die. I think you is going to stay with Mika, but I don't know what's going to happen. But I don't think... Mika or you is going to die, necessarily. I hope not. Mika better not die. No! I don't think you's going to die, but Mika, I'm like, mm, I don't want that, but I don't know. <sighs> but yeah, I just, I think it's setting up for you to be stuck behind, and it's going to give an out for Shino and them to get out of there and leave you with Mika, because she said no buts. That was end all be all. <sighs> oh my god. Please follow my orders. Oh my gosh. And then, yeah, I like that you holds her hand and he's like, we just need to save everyone within five minutes. Within five minutes! <laughs> Seems totally legit. I was like on my hands being like, hurry up and untie them, darn it. And then, and then I like that Mitsuba's like, no, it'll work out. Our teamwork's gotten better too. And you know, she's like, and we've become good friends too. I was like, stop. Stop, Yuichi! Do not say the do not say a phrase like that in the midst of a battle. You don't go into a battlefield and say we've become really good friends. So that's gonna save us. You don't say that, Yuichi. What are you doing, Yuichi? Oh my god! As soon as he said that, I was like, no, you cinnamon roll, quit! And then of course Kamizuki's like, well, we're not that good of friends. And he's like, what are you talking about? Oh my god, Yuichi! I can't. You need to get your cinnamon bun self in gear. Oh my god. So yeah, then the attack starts. The attack starts in all of this. And they decide to to go do their thing. Oh my god. I'm gonna definitely get some pictures for the thumbnail of Gurren and Shinya up in this here soon. Because there's some really good shots of the two of them. That shot where they just fall on each other. It's like, mmm. The shippers, I'm sure, really went crazy for that scene. Because when Gurren's just lying on top of Shinya, I'm like, shippers probably really like, enjoyed that. And so, yeah, it seems like everything's going fine. Like, Gurren's squad is getting rid of the vampires. They're getting an opening made for them to go up and attack. And using the illusion there with Shinya and Goshi here. Like, it seems to work out fine. And the illusion gets them distracted so that the others can come in and rescue them. I, it's Everything seems like it's going okay. But, yeah, it, of course, you still have Curly to deal with. As we have all these other guys come in. And Goshi, I like that there's the caveat that Goshi's ability has a range. And that if you go outside the range, it will not work. I like that. My curiosity is if, what I'm curious about is if that range 
if it's like a diameter where it's like all around them like a field or if it just permeates outwards and does not go doesn't have any depth to it so i'm worried i'm wondering about that i'm wondering if the illusion if crowley and them can see through it if crowley sees through the illusion or or not if they don't see through the illusion that's the question oh my gosh <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah so everything seems to be working all right like Narumi and all of them go and everything seems okay and Crowley does not seem concerned right says things are getting interesting and then Gurren and them decide to like take take the initiative and go right after Crowley I just love that Crowley is like oh are you the commander we've been like totally looking for you you're the one that we want convenient that all worked out for us and then Gurren doesn't seem to notice or care that they're looking for him and then they start battling and Crowley is terrifying he's really really strong he doesn't seem distracted or phased by anything they throw at him I really thought when Crowley grabbed his arm I really thought he was gonna chop it off and I think he was until Shinya showed up and then he uses, he just throws Gurren into him. I'm Again, again, why did Shinya talk? Why didn't he just fire the gun? It was like he was going to chop off Gurren's arm. Shinya, you're a damn sniper. Snipe the shit out of him now. Why did you monologue? Red flag number three. <laughs> Red flag number three. And you could say it's like just shown in monologuing, but again, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I'm taking so a picture of that. That image is getting, getting on here of Gurren on top of Shinya. Uh, I want to get a picture of them like holding each other as they walk out the door. But yeah, so then they notice that Gurren and Shinya are in trouble. And Goshi's like, no, we'll only drag them down even if we go now. Like, we got to get the hostages and go. That's That was the whole mission. Don't let your emotions get involved. We have a plan. Goshi says he has a plan. And they're like, okay, we continue the mission. We got to save as many as possible. They've got this under control, right? But then, so Narumi squad's keeping with the plan, but Shinoa used like, there's nothing to think about. We're going to help them. And Shinoa's like, well, that kind of goes against everything that we said we were going to do. And Kimizuki doesn't help matters. She's like, oh, we could launch a pincer attack. And then Yoichi's like, yeah, let's do it. And she's like, we had this plan and we're going against it. But, and I don't know what the consequences are going to be, but... And she says, just for three minutes. I'm like, how long has it been, girl? Has it only been two minutes or remaining three minutes we're going to use to help and then we're leaving? And she's like, I'll come up with a plan. Do as I say. Okay, so Shinoa's taking the lead on this. I like that we cut to Gurren and Shinya, like, down on the lower level at one of the conference tables. Like, nursing their wounds. He's on a whole different level than the other nobles. Yeah. It might be it for us. No, it's going as planned. So he's like, yeah, right. We're just decoys. Mm -hmm. We have their attention as bait. We did our jobs. And so, yeah, Gurren's whole thing is like, no, we're just decoys to buy time until the main unit gets here. So it's fine. But then he's like, we need to think of an escape plan. And that's when I'm like, has Crowley been standing there listening the whole time to what they just said? Has he? He's like, don't be so cold. He just seems so friendly. Like Crowley's design is so inviting. He's just like, oh, he's like the happy vampire. He's like, hey guys, what's up? What's up, bro? He's like that frat bro. <laughs> he's frat bro vampire, Crowley is. And then Horn and Chess. Mm. So yeah, I so Horn is gonna face Shinya with the whip. Again, Shinya is not great at close combat, so that's not that's pretty a pretty bad matchup for him. I guess we accept their invitation. Ah! And Chess looks like she has a sword too. So interesting. Interesting. But yeah, so Yoichi, or not Yoichi, um, Shinoa, he's like, let's take the stairs. And she's like, no, be quiet. We're going to sneak attack him. Follow me. I got a plan. And they're like, okay. So I do like the Shinoa's like, let's not just take the main staircase, you. Let's have a plan to sneak up on them when they least expect it. Seems legit. Because I think that blue light at the end, when you pops by the ground, that was Mitsuba. I don't think it was Shin uh, Shinya. It was Mitsuba creating an opening in the floor for him to pop up on and, and surprise Crowley. But yeah, so Gurren versus Crowley. 
and then Shinya versus a uh, horn and it's not going well and Chess is just hanging out. Chess is just hanging out unless she's needed. It's ugh. But mm-hmm. And she's like, shall we, Lord Crowley? And he's like, I can handle this level on my own. Ah. And yeah, that shot of that shot of Crowley, I really like that that pose he's in. He's just like, you know, it's fine. No big deal. You're getting a little better. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Crowley, he may not get defeated. I the only, You know, come to think of it, the only way I can really see Crowley getting defeated based on this fight here in this season, the only way I can see him getting defeated is by if, one, you has like a freak out moment again. If Mika or somebody like double crosses him in the moment and kills him. If Farid or Cruel kills him. But I don't see Gurren and the others killing him. I just, I don't. And so, yeah, he gets he gets his sword activated and gets it to where Shinya can snipe it, but he misses and is able to knock it away and the recoil comes back and hits him. He's like, aren't you two repeating the same moves a bit too much? And then they're gone. Oh. He's like, huh, I guess they just went to go hide. Hmm. All of you looks around like, where'd they go? But then, yeah, oh, Gurren carrying Shinya off the field. I'm like, ugh. He's like, walk on your own if you're fine. Okay, this is the thing that he says. He, this is red flag number four with Shinya. He says, no, let me stay as is. I'll hold them off behind us. Mm -mm. That's suspicious. I don't know. I just, I don't suspect Gurren anymore, but Shinya has been so suspicious. I just, I'm like, ugh. I'm like, how, I'm trying to get this to where it'll, I don't know. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And he's like, don't run away. I don't like to run. Crowley, and Crowley's ridiculously fast because he got there like, like that back in core one. So he's like, I don't like to run to chase after you. And he's like, then don't chase us. Oh my gosh. And he just like steps out of the way from it. Ugh. He's like, you guys attacked us first and now you don't want me to chase you? You humans are always so selfish. And I like that they, he almost has like cross eyes and chest and horn are like on either side. I'm like, what do we do, boss? Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. But yeah, Shinya just gives off, just does not give off trustworthy vibes. I'm sorry. And I could be, they could totally pull the wool out from under me, like over my eyes and be like, nope, Shinya's been fine all along. He's not been the traitor. But when he says, no, I think I held him back. I'm like, you didn't hold him back. They, you, Shinya looked behind him, red flag number five. Shinya looked behind him and saw that Crowley batted them away. No, you did not hold them back. I, mm, mm Nope. And him coming out from behind. And so here's the thing. Gurren, like, slides him away to fight. Which is still overpowered by Crowley. And then Crowley stabbing him. Like, at this point, I don't think Gurren is the traitor. Or if Gurren is the traitor, Farid's the only one that knows it. And Gurren has only been giving information to Farid. He has no clue about Crowley and Crowley has no clue about him. Right? It doesn't seem like, honestly, the only one, that no, the only vampire that seems to know about the human's traitor's actions is Farid. Because Farid's been the one getting information from that person. None of the other vampires seem to be privy to this. So this betrayal, only Farid knows about it on the vampire side. And I think only Shinya... Or if Gurren knows, it's, you know, unintentionally. But, oh my gosh. And he's like, oh, I'm not supposed to kill you. I've got lots of questions for you. And then Gurren's like, no, just kill me. He's like, I'm done for. You take command and continue the mission, Sh Shinya. And Shinya's like, what? No! So back in, back in a few episodes ago, Gurren told his squad, he's like, if I die, Shinya's going to take control. But Shinya's like, excuse me? Shinya, I don't think, intends for Gurren to die. But he also doesn't want Gurren involved because he's the traitor. I don't know. He's like, go now, Shinya. He's like, you should listen to him before I change my mind. And Shinya doesn't get a chance. Doesn't get a chance to answer the question or run because then Mitsuba slashes and you comes out of the ground. Look at that. Look at that. Ah! Uh, oh my gosh. But that, that animation was so fluid there at the end. 
Oh, it was so fluid where he just like spun around with the blade. Gurren's gonna block it, or Shinya's gonna block it. Somebody's gonna block it. I just... Ivey. Yeah, this episode, oh my gosh. Shinya is obviously, as you can tell by this discussion, still suspicious to me. <laughs> I don't think Gurren is anymore. I think Gurren is just caught up in all this. And I don't think anybody but Farid knows that there's a traitor amongst the humans that's feeding them information. Because the vampires don't even see, seem to know that the information is getting traded. So, of course, Mika is going to show... Maybe Mika shows up and saves you. Maybe Mika pops in. Maybe that's where this goes. So I think it's either going to be like one of four scenarios. I don't think Yu's going to get hit. I don't think Yu's getting hit by Crowley's Blade. No. One of four things is going to happen. Either Gurren's going to stop it, throw himself in the fray and stop it. Um, Shinya's going to snipe and stop it. Uh, Yoichi or somebody from under where Mitsuba like made that explosion is going to come up and help stop it. Or Mika's going to show up like right at the start of the next episode and be like, boom, stop it. But I don't think Yu's getting hit by Crowley's attack. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but then from there... I, are they going to retreat? Because I'm pretty sure three minutes is going to be up. So are they going to retreat with the hostages? I imagine maybe Narumi's squad has taken the hostages and gone. I hope so. I hope that some of Gurren's squad goes with them too. But I'm like, where are they, are they going to go? What's going to happen? Oh, I'm really excited, y'all, to see what's going to happen next. But I just don't know. So yeah, lots of suspicion, lots of questions unanswered. I have my rule of eight. We're going to talk about next episode, but the rule of eight has never let me down. So I'm pretty excited about the next episode. So I'm curious to know your thoughts down below. I hope you all enjoyed this dis discussion and reaction. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah, I'll be back next week with more Seraph of the End. Bye.